Solomon gave me crushed chilies and pepper, and I snorted them again and again and again. I smacked them in my eyes, too, over and over, because here, everything has to be bleeding or tearing or burning or already dead. It's not enough. It's all red. It's all red. It's working. It's working. It's working. That's how it all began for me. We were eight months in. I had to fake sick because I was wasting too much time. These people, I thought, they already know who they are. They're the collective Jewish soul. Or the Israeli, or Chinese, or Lebanese, or black, or employee of the month, or poor, or prostitute soul. These people, they latch onto anything that comes with a label or a pin to stick on their shirt. And here they're telling me what's right? Maybe you're right, I thought. Maybe it is noble to die for one's country. But this isn't my country just because it's yours. How can I say this is my country if I haven't tried the others? I need to take his temperature. I'm prone to laugh, so I don't look at her. Which is why Solomon has to. It's why I can't afford to talk, why he does. I need to take his temperature. He needs to throw up. Look, I found him on the floor, unconscious. He was, he was throwing up all the way here, on the car. I found him unconscious, on the floor, in his house, and, and his parents are away, and I swear to God, he is going to die. Look at this thing, I've seen that before, okay? He needs to throw up, just let him throw up. In this army, in this clinic, the golden rule is you're lying. Everything you say is a lie, unless you lie well. And even if you do, they don't let you out of their sight. So if you've tried faking sick here before, you come prepared. Which is why I'm happy being dragged to the men's room to throw up. Because hidden in this garbage can right here is a thermos I pre-filled with boiling water. And I reload, because once is never enough in this clinic. Because here, to do something right is to way, way, way overdo it. A hundred thousand percent. Like this and more. And more, and more, and more. So I sip again, and now the boiling water in the thermos we brought with us is driving past a cat in a brown paper bag burning up in flames. Burnt to the bones again, and again, and again, and again. This is how you survive the first test, how you fight back. It's what you do to win the battle, even if you lose the war. Because if you've been here before, you know that boiling water or chalk or a cigarette or gum or a warm olive, any one of those is key for temperature. You know what to expect because you did basic training. You survive. The rest is a piece of cake. When Solomon died later that week, we split him up among us like he always asked. Seriously, I'm really asking you guys to do this. If I die before you guys, please don't bury me. Take me around the world. Take me on a trip. Take me around. Sit me down next to you. Will you fuck? I want to I wanna see you having sex. I want to see the girls. They won't know I'm watching. I'm dead. The perfect excuse. Solomon came up with a business plan one day. A, a company, company, he yelled. With graveyards in different countries all around the world and they, they move your body around every hundred years or so to another beautiful country so you never get bored, never stop living the life? Seriously, that's what I want you guys to do for me, okay? So later that week when he actually died, his parents kept his head, Yaniv his penis, and I his foot, and we put his organs in other people to save them while we could. And yes, after that long week, I never really went back. I got sicker and sicker and found more and more ways to not be there without anyone knowing. Then, after everything I did to get a day here, a day there, the army gave me six months off when I finally broke down mentally, and all they asked was that I decide if I was coming back. With so much time on my hands, I packed Solomon in a sock and flew to Thailand like he asked. Yeah. <laughs> Shani, yeah, I'll